on DAB Digital Radio, on the free Times Radio app, and via your smart speaker. This is Times Radio. Good evening to you. Kate Borsay with you here on Times Radio. In this brand new slot, it's sparkly, it's new and it's going okay so far. Uh, From 8 until 10 every evening, I'll be joining you Monday to Thursday for not only the latest news, but we'll also take in some views and some really interesting stories um, and interesting people too. And that's what we're going to cover next here because uh, in the studio, I'm joined by two very special guests. The first is Brad Day. He's a former inner city teacher who moved to one of Britain's most affluent towns. Now, Now, Brad is fighting back against county lines gangs who target middle class children. The key message really behind this is that county lines can happen to any child in any area. And the way that Brad is spreading this message is one that really got me interested. It's a police funded film starring his pupils, one of whom, Freddie Wilson, also joins us here in the studio. Before we say hello, let's hear a clip of the film. Perhaps you're the special one. You're the gifted one. You're the one who's a bit different. Thanks, but I don't see it. I, th- I do. I need people like you. If you need people like me, you're looking for the wrong people. I'll let you down. There's no risk to you, is it? This is the sort of thing that your brother probably couldn't do. Not your mum. Okay. Come here tomorrow at four. Okay? And there might be some, like, rewards along the way. Let's explain what's going on then with assistant head at the Trevelyan Middle School, Brad Day. Good evening. Hello, and Freddie Wilson, a Trevelyan student and one of the stars of the campaign, uh, the lead actor in the film, by the way, as well. And I know you helped to direct and you did a bit of producing as well, Freddie. So welcome to you. Welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Brad, let's go to you first of all. Uh, The main message, as we said, is that county lines can happen to any child in any area. I think, first of all, um, because it can be misconstrued, let's just explain what county lines is. And then the justification behind your argument, really, that it's not just something for kids in... In poor areas. Absolutely. And so I think county lines often gets mistaken for um, just casual drug dealing and it's seen as a big drug issue. Actually, the drugs are a side point when we really think about the issue. Um, County lines are organised by really sophisticated, organised crime groups. And they what they're doing is they're exploiting children, any type of child, in order to um, do their do their really nasty work effectively. And yes, the product is the drugs, but it's the exploitation of the children that we are really inspired to to act on. And that was the motivation of our film. Something really interesting um, that happened early on was I spoke to parents about personal development across the school more generally, about what sort of issues they'd like to explore. And actually, this was one that they all said they didn't know much about. Mm. And to be really honest, I didn't know much about it in its modern form either. I spoke to a really fantastic, unfunded organisation, an anonymous group called Space. And that conversation changed pretty much my entire life for the last Mm. six months but also um, the way I saw the issue because what Space said to me sorry what Space said to me was very much that it's an issue that can affect any type of child whereas I had fallen as many do for the impression that it only affected children from vulnerable backgrounds and that really was the genesis of the film in that moment. So you uh, were originally a teacher in North London yes. in quite a rundown uh, area and then you moved to Windsor, yep. uh, which is a more affluent area. Um, different kids, different parents largely. But the message is still the same, really, is that county lines can, can affect your children. Um, but what's the difference between how a kid from a more affluent area might be targeted? How are they targeted? Because it's not necessarily the lure of cash, is it? Um. Not necessarily, but I would say actually one of the misconceptions is that there is big differences. And one of the messages we want to get across is that children, by the very nature of being children, are vulnerable. It doesn't matter if they are a bright grammar school child, doesn't matter if they're from the richest background, private educated, whatever it might be. And there are many, sadly, there are many case studies of children um, from all kinds of backgrounds, including those I've just mentioned, being targeted by those gangs. But it's not just the lure, as we heard in the film, the lure of the grooming, um, offers of shoes, 
tattoos. It's all um, trainers, those sorts of things. It's also the sense of self-worth. As I say, they're incredibly sophisticated gangs, these organised crime groups that really know their trade very well. And as a result, they are able to target the children on a very psychological level, making them feel this new self-worth, making them feel that they can have a loyalty to the gang because the gang will treat them all the more maturely and, and um, in a much better way than their own parents or their friends. And so what they do is they draw them into the gangs and develop this cult-like um, loyalty that means that they are um, completely locked within the gang mm. and psychologically rewired. And therefore, it's very, very tricky to actually divert children away from these gangs once they're in. Yeah, so, so our film is very much about that early, trying to get the message yeah. out early. So loyalty, um, trying to entice loyalty from children, but also blackmail comes into this as well. So uh, the child might not want a new pair of trainers, but they are effectively trapped by some of the gang members, maybe filmed, uh, maybe put in a really precarious um, position. Um, and then that is used as blackmail against them. So they are effectively scared absolutely, um, and are scared into acting then um, uh, uh, across county lines for these gangs. Let's, let's, let's sort of uh, expand on uh, some of the example with Freddie, uh, Freddie Wilson here, who is the star of the film. Congratulations, Freddie. Um, tell me about the storyline of the film because uh, you kids from Trevelyan uh, Middle School helped develop the story as well, didn't you? Yes, so from the start we were pitched the idea of County Lines and we sort of all together we developed the idea of the film and how we could do it. So what happens is there, there's, there's this boy called Elliot and he's not necessarily a more fortunate child or a less fortunate child, he's just a child that may have some behavioural issues but overall a normal child. And he starts in first school being very popular, he's flooded with friends, good friends, but then what seems to happen is his friends fade away from him when he goes into secondary school and it makes him do things that perhaps he wouldn't normally do, so he gets in a lot of trouble and he ends up like storming out of school during the day and he goes to like the local park and he meets this groomer and this groomer is what introduces him to County Lions, but with, of course, the promise of, like, he promises him trainers in this case, but it can be so much more, such as, like, phones, money, anything, really. And then what happens is Elliot starts to maybe feel happy with this, but he soon turns to the dark side of County Lions, so he's stolen from, and he's they rob him with the stuff that they've given him from, and he's just absolutely humiliated. So And then he's later arrested in the film, which is just... And the point that we want to get across is it's not necessarily the arresting that the children are scared of, it's more what the gang could potentially do yeah, to them yeah. in situations. Yeah, so the, the fear of getting caught by the police is almost less than the fear of not doing what the gang wants them to do. Yes, so the gang is sort of the person that will beat them up. It will threaten their lives. It will even take them away from their parents in some cases. But the police will not necessarily support them, but give them like sort of protection mm. which is why they're less scared of being arrested but more scared of the consequences that may come with it from the gang yeah probably because they feel like they can never escape from the gang um now your school runs from year uh what is it now year five year, to year five eight. to eight which is ages nine to 13 Absolutely, isn't yes. it and how old are you freddie so i'm 12 at the moment and i'm in year eight Goodness me. Um, and what was it like for you getting involved uh, in this? Did you have any idea that children like you could be vulnerable? Yes, so at the start of this project, I had absolutely no idea what Cantalines was. I was. It was a completely new topic to me, and I feel it is a new topic to so many children across the UK, which is a reason why we made it. It's because people like me, people like all kinds of people, don't understand the issue properly. So as we were pitched to the idea by Mr Day and we slowly developed the storyline as a group. Wow. And um, Brad, what was it like for you putting all of this together? And was there any hesitancy? I mean, I mean, I know that you say parents wanted to know more about County Lines. That's one thing. It is another thing using the kids uh, to make a film about it. The film's called Notice Me. But you also managed to secure cash from your local police. Well, I, th I think, Joe, there, there was fear at every stage. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was <laughs> a, I, I, I had the idea. I, I spoke to a couple of children about it. And I remember hovering over the keyboard when I was like sending the email to the parents saying, I'd like to involve your child in a film about County Lines drug dealing. And and it was it was definitely, uh, it felt like a risk. Um, but actually what's been brilliant is every single parent has been so 
supportive. Some of them um, have um, been able to share their own expertise as well, which has been really brilliant um, in different sectors and mm. so forth. And so um, it's been a real community project down to our, you know, our caretaker driving us over and taking us to locations. We secured a bungalow from a school in our trust. Um, so we got a really realistic, well, a, a real house that we could film in. So it's been a really brilliant community endeavour and continues to be so. And it's a full length feature film, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't planned to be. It was going to be a 10 minute short shot. Because I was my surprised phone. when I started. I was like, oh my, oh my goodness, it's over an hour. It, it was about actually realising how deep the issue was. Yeah. And the more I learned about it, the more and the more the children learned about it because they were part of that research, meeting fantastic survivors such as Emily Vaughan, who's now an author as well, uh, meeting others that we just wanted to do something that was um, that was that bigger feast, actually, because it was going, it, there was so much we can cover from the grooming to the dangers mm. to um, the psychological effects that as a result of that um, it grew to what it is uh, alongside um, resources that accompany it and everyone can access it it's all free on YouTube if you go to YouTube it's notice me at Trevelyan so type those three words in notice me Trevelyan and you will find uh, the video there and how many schools have requested to use this? So we've actually already had around over 100, almost 200 schools Goodness that have me. been involving it already. But yeah. the reason we're here tonight on your lovely, wonderful new show is to uh, <laughs> present it even further and um, hopefully reach a wider audience. As I say, it comes with resources as well for the classroom, yeah. as well as the film itself. And so Freddie worked really hard on it as a parent guide, um, which we were just uh, reading up on before to revise. Uh, so Freddie made this amazing parent guide full of lots of mini behind the scenes clips and so forth. Wow. Um, so he's one. What's your, what's your number one tip for parents then? So what we have for parents is like things like, so for primarily being like maybe injuries. So like ch children coming home with big injuries that might not necessarily be natural and making up excuses for them. I or see, and so thing, spotting, spotting yeah, basically when your like, kid might be um, susceptible. Like big chunks of money or special gifts that you haven't bought them or you have no idea how they've obtained them. So they're just some of the signs of county lines. Wow, incredible. Listen, thank you both so much for coming in to speak to us. The film is called Notice Me. It's now available on YouTube. Um, plenty of schools getting involved with this as well. It's a film entirely made uh, by years five to eight at Trevelyan Middle School under the guidance, of course, of their teacher, Brad Day. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you both with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, there you go. Uh, it's a fascinating story. It's also been written up in the Times, by the, uh, by the way. So if you want to see uh, or find out more information about that, uh, you can head, uh, just search up Brad Day and the Times, which I discovered earlier, took me straight to the article that came out uh, a week or so ago. Thank you to both of you. Good luck to you. Uh, coming up, we'll take a look at tomorrow's Times today.